say yeah, so. Yeah, I'm saying mid 50s at least. All right, yeah. let's see here. What does that say, Steve? Welcome back to another episode of Wildcatters TV. Today I am on the Mississippi River with Captain Ryan Casey. Ryan Casey of Show Me Catfishing Guide yes, Service, correct? Yes, sir. That's the one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we fish the Mississippi and Missouri Rivers here in the St. Louis area. Uh, we do travel a little bit south and north depending on you know where the big school of fish is or where they're biting good. But uh, typically you're going to find us right here in the St. Louis area. Yeah, there's so much wood down through here. It's it's hard to make it through it, but if you can, it can be good. All right, Ryan, Ryan, when you're uh, looking for a spot to, to do your bumping, what, what, what are you looking for? You know, uh, there's there's several different things you look for. It depends on what the fish's pattern is uh, at that time. But um, what I like to look for a lot is structure. You know, uh, channel edges, wood, rock, you know, anything that uh, is a current break for these fish um, where they can pull up out of, oh, there he is. He oh, just hit it and he dropped it. I seen the hit. <laughs> yeah, he hit it and dropped it. I don't think he was very big. But um, anywhere they can kind of get out of that current and and kind of rest or, or pull into to feed, you know, and a lot of times out here, especially in the summertime, these things like to get on the sand dunes or sand humps, and there's little drop-offs on the back of those, and those might be right out in the middle of the river. But that structure, you know, that's something that they can pull up out of the current and uh, have to get out from underneath this log right Yeah, here. you gotta pay attention to what you're doing for sure, too. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> it's it's a non-stop. Uh, this right here, you, you have to know at all times where your bait is, and that's where a sensitive rod comes into play. I mean, I could feel it walk right into that tree. I knew what it was. Yeah. And knew I had to come out, you know, to kind of pull it out of it and, uh, you know, there's little tricks that make you a better bumper. You know, feel is is 90% of the game, 95 probably. I mean, you got to feel everything what you're doing. Then there's little tricks to get out of snags because you're going to find them, um, especially with what we're fishing today. We're fishing in whole trees and, and lay downs. Mm -hmm. So in, in heavy current, we've got the trolling motor running on nine right now, I'm trying to go below a mile an hour and uh, just presenting these baits in the little drops and behind the structure. And if you can walk it up over that tree and behind it, you know, that's where he lives. Well, I think we're using the same way. Oh, there he is. <laughs> that right. boy crushed it. That boy crushed it. Yeah, he did. <laughs> oh, he's taking some drag. Yeah, there he, he is. He ain't that big. He ain't that big. He's a young little whooper snapper. But it's action. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he scrappy. He thinks he's big. Yeah. No, I'm ready for a, a bigger one. Full grown fish. Full grown fish. Yeah. You want me to grab him, Steve, or you got him? I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I'll come get you, Steve. You got I, I can give you got the snippers or whatever. You got it. Oh, <laughs> he did it. He pulled a move. He pulled a move. There we go. Little 18 pounder. That's it. One thing about these hooks, I can tell you, you meet pliers with them. Yeah. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yeah. So they're just so little, though. All right. Nice fish, Steve. Good job. Good job. How do you approach the bumping part of this? You know, there's a there's a couple different techniques, and there's guys that have different uh, different styles to doing this. Um, most of the time, my style is more natural. I want to really slow it down and present it uh, as close, you know, to the contour and the drops as possible. I try not to move it. Um, I just want to drop it down, feel the bottom, lift it back up about three to six inches. Unless the fish are up off the bottom, and your fish finder will tell you that. You know, like I said, there's there's different styles, and a lot of people have different, uh, you know, I'd say techniques when it comes to bumping. Some people like to uh, bump really fast and aggressive to get a reaction bite. You know, they're they're really going pretty fast. You know, two, three, four miles an hour, and they're jigging the pole and letting the you know letting the bait down, mm -hmm. trying to get that reaction bite. Cover a lot of water, and when fish aren't feeding very well that is a technique where you can get some extra bites 
my presentation most of the time is uh is as natural as I think you can try to get it, you know, without moving the bait a lot, you know, basically just walking it back. Um, I usually like to be, you know, somewhere around two or 300 foot behind the boat, something like that. And um, get into a zone where you can just drop the weight, boom, it's right there, lift it back up, you know, three, six inches off the bottom. Like I said, sometimes, um, you know, the fish are pulled up off the bottom and your fish finder will tell you that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you need to put a float on or, a longer leader and um, you know and, and attack those fish that way but most of the time when they're when they're hanging tight to the structure out in the current um, you know I'm trying to make it as natural as possible and take it right to the fish put it right in front of them as naturally as I think you know you can so I'm just basically lifting it up holding it there dropping it down there's the bottom bring it back up drop it down till I feel the bottom again and then just lift it up you know just nice and smooth so when you yeah, first just, deploy it though you just keep letting it out and letting it out till you hit the till you feel it hit the bottom feel the, hit the bottom then i lift it up check for the bottom again if i gotta let more line out and when you start bumping is all about feel so when you first get started use a heavier weight if anybody's uh starting out trying to do this save yourself some time use a heavy weight you can fish right underneath the boat and catch fish that heavy that heavy weight's really gonna allow you to get a feel for the bottom and that's what this this whole game is about is is the feel and that's something that can't be taught you know that's something you're going to have to learn and, and practice with and get good at so use a heavy weight you if you're dragging your bait on the bottom or anything like that sure you're you can catch a few fish but you have no idea where it's at you don't know if you're hung up you don't know if you have a bite um and it doesn't look natural you know if they're really feeding sure you can catch a fish sometimes dragging it but um that is something that's gonna, you're gonna beat your head against the wall because you're gonna lose a ton of tackle. Um, so use a heavier weight when you get started. And what you wanna do is you wanna be able to drop that rod tip and feel it hit bottom every time. You wanna be able to, and if you can't feel it, you know, you need to let out. And if you can't find the bottom, reel it back in because it's probably tangled up or in a structure or something like that. Oh, there he is. Come on, come on, here you go. Oh, that one got some muscles or some meat. Look at <laughs> a little better fish there. Yeah. Boy, that was just one of the ones where you drop it off in a hole and it just goes slack. And uh, <laughs> there's a little oh. drag. Well, look at that. Uh... Oh, yeah. Oh, that's oh, drag. Yeah, he's going. <laughs> yeah. And, become... and what, what kind of current we in today? Well, how many uh, miles? We're, we're running a 112 trolling motor on eight and a half, trying to go about 0. 0.6, 0. 0.7 and uh, really slow it down and put it in front of these fish. This fish hit a big skipjack head that dad caught this morning for us and uh, I think we're about to see him. I think he's gonna be about 20 pounds if I had to guess. Oh, I thought he'd be bigger than that, but this I, current- it's, it works. I haven't like, really let up on it. It's I want about it. four mile an hour current. So yeah. Four mile an hour. Yeah, there oh, he is. He might be a little- He might be 25. Yeah. I'm gonna ease up on him here and back up and let dad gripper this fish for me. That's one nice thing. If, about this boat, this old pro guide. She's got plenty of room. <laughs> now see, I can really, there he is. Oh yeah, he's 25, easy. There he is. He might be 30. <laughs> he's a fat, healthy fish, I know that. He put up a good fight. He's, he's mid to over 20s. Yeah, healthy fish. Oh yeah. Good way to start the day, guys. Yeah. Good way to start the day. Yes, sir. Nice healthy specimen. I've been using these little seven out trocar hooks. Seven and six out on these things. And I'm gonna tell you, they're mean. Oh, there we go. Alright, buddy, let's see. There he is. Yeah. Pretty little fish. Not a bad one for your first first, uh, first outing. Of the season. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm you're you're saying that the temperature uh is, is dictating when you can start bumping you know on this you can catch these 24. i'm gonna let him go you can catch fish when it's much colder than when i like to start bumping but my my philosophy on on uh bumping and, and moving baits is i like anything above 65 degrees right i think fish are more apt to chase i'm not saying you can't catch them when it's 50 degrees bumping but i think more consistently for big fish for them being willing to chase I think once it hits 65 degrees and up, 
that's when those big fish are more apt to move to catch ah. bait. So I catch more of my big fish on anchor, spot locking, walking baits, and stopping them than I do drifting or bumping. In the uh, cold, in the cold. Until it's 65, 65 degrees or better. Yep. And uh, that's my take on it. Let's go get another one. All right. All I'm doing essentially is just feeling for the bottom, you know, dropping it down. There's the bottom. If the bottom starts coming to you, you know, you just reel up and, and you always want to make sure you, you're in that strike zone. You know, that three to six inches for me, most of the time, like I said, sometimes they're up, sometimes they're hugging real tight. But um, when, when you start getting good at the feel of these things, and that's where a sensitive rod comes into play, um, there's little things that'll make you better. Um, there's a little pull when you hit a drop off. It just, it's a little slight pull that you'll feel and that's when you need to let line out. And, it, and it, the faster you can realize that, the faster you're gonna get it down right on that drop and in, that, in front of that fish's face. And then, uh, you know, hopping it up over things like rocks and logs and, and, and getting it down on the back side of them. You know, that's where those big ones a lot of times will come from. So the feel is the most important thing. So like you said, you need a, a light sensitive rod and um, in practice, you know, I can teach the fundamentals to people, but I always tell them they need to go out and practice and, and using a heavier weight and fishing areas that aren't like, not an area like we're fishing today. This is, this is a more advanced uh, right. course right here, <laughs> but um, we're trying to hang a big fish for you all. And, uh, right now, I'm not thoroughly convinced they're, they're, the big ones are in here, but uh, there are some fish in here, so. We're gonna pound out till the end of it and then maybe go find a new stretch and see if we can't get on a, a better school of fish. So, but um, yeah, it's all about feel. Uh, just, you know, hang with it. It's gonna be frustrating. There's gonna be a lot of times where you're losing a lot of tackle and beating your head against the wall. I mean, I've been hung up at least three or four times already, but the faster you realize it, you can also drop your rod and reel out of those things a lot of times. So um, the feel won't come, you know, automatically. It's something you gotta practice with. But uh, you always just want to keep in contact with the bottom and know where it is at all times. And this technique will a lot of times tell you what kind of bottom you're fishing. If it's rock, mud, sand, silt, um, you know, if there's wood there, you can feel all that. Right. So it really, it, it helps uh, you get a better perspective of your body of water too. So, well, those yeah. are some great tips for the the guys starting out on this bumping Oh, it's, it's great. You know, and uh, get yourself a good light rod. Uh, plenty of tackle because you're going to lose a bunch and uh, get in some current get a trolling motor and uh, and have at it it's a lot of fun and if you don't have any of those things give me a call and we'll be happy to take you out now this just average sinker weight what do we what, what if a guy was going to go out and buy some tackle right now to do this with well it depends on where you're fishing i mean if you're going to do the ohio river you know you look three quarters of an ounce an ounce two ounce you know three ounce you know those kind of things, and there's times on the Mississippi when the water's low or the current's low, you can you can use you know two ounces or an ounce. Uh, but like right now, we're using eight. If we were in deeper water, uh, we'd probably be using 12s or 16s. You know, the depth of the water, the speed of the current, um, those play a big factor in, in how much weight you know you need to use. And like I said, if you're starting out, start off with a heavier weight. If I if I had somebody starting out today, I'd have at least probably a 14 or a 16 ounce weight oh, that's okay. hard to hold all day but um it's going to give them a lot more feel for where the bottom is and in the long run then we can start lightening up their weight when they get used to that one and get them back there a little bit but like i said you can catch fish uh directly underneath the boat you know we do it drifting all the time like he's got some heft to him. One of them ones where they thunk it and then they just sit there on it. And that's the exact bite I'm telling you about where this softer rod tip saved the day. You was able to detect that. Well, I mean, you can detect it because they, they hammer it, you know? Right. But then they just sit there on it. They don't, they don't turn and go with it. They don't, you know, just crush it. They're kind of just sucking it in and hammering it. And a lot of times they'll spit it out if they feel anything. Ah. So that, that, that softer tip right there, I will guarantee you, 
save me, that fish from let me letting get, loose. Now we might lose him, <laughs> but but I'm pretty sure it's a, we're catching this fish because of that softer rod tip right there. Man, I'm getting the blue belly on this side. I'm gonna try to get it on the other side now. I can't tell for sure. He's coming up kind of easy. Well, your dad's had the biggest one so far. Well, we, we'll probably cut that one out. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Let's lift up on this joker. Nah, he's coming up pretty easy. I think he's... I think he's gonna be in that 20 to 30 pound. Ooh, 30 pound range. Maybe, Still. maybe a heavy 30. I got the net. You got the net out, huh? Yeah. Oh, baby. They will, will, a lot of times this is where they go crazy. All right, here he comes up. Oh, he's oh, a yeah, nice one. A yeah. That's a, net, that's a, net, that's a 50 or 60. <laughs> that's a net fish. He's, he's at least mid 40s and well, he might be. Why don't you get down and let me in there for the All net, right, Brian. Look at this rod. <laughs> look at that thing. I didn't get a great look at him, uh, but I thought he might be closer 50. to 50. He's yeah, yeah he's a big fish. Oh, yeah, he's that's 50. a 50. He's 50, at least. That's a Mississippi River 50. That's, that's a white one, too. That's a, that's a damn white whale, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Call me Ishmael, Dad. Here he comes. Get him out away from the goat. I can't oh. get to him. Well, that's on you if he comes off. <laughs> <laughs> Here he comes. Get that joker. Get that fish. Woo! Woo! It, is a great, it is a great white whale. It is a great white whale. <laughs> Oh yeah, he's almost oh. fifty. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Yeah, there you go. Look, look it had a pretty fish. And we would have not gotten that fish without that light tip, I guarantee you. And that right there is why I love that rod. Well, it handled it too. Yes, sir. I, I like the. That's a fact. That's what I'm talking about when I said these things are in their prime right now this time of year. You uh. They're fat, sassy. You almost didn't get that fish. I, what look do you how mean? He's, look how he's hooked. Oh yeah. The skin of, see that's that's where you know uh you know expert fish you know fighting skills and everything come into play i'm joking i don't even ever get to fight these things that's luck oh it's better than you think yeah he's in there he's in that back of that two mm -hmm. better than you think oh there we go well buddy let's see how much you weigh we'll weigh him in the net he's well over 50. yeah he's over now look at 50. that belly he's yeah, a fat I mean, one. he's fat yeah, so. I'm saying mid 50s at least. All right, let's see here. What's that, 60? Oh, 57. 57. 57. Hey, we got to use the monster net. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it's time to get my old Sea Arc owner's tournament jersey here. Slimed up. Slimed up. Well, look how fat that fish. That's pretty fish. Oh, yeah. Pretty fish. <laughs> All right, Ryan. Hey, what that, do you think about it? That's uh, that's a nice fish. You TWC bumping rod, boys. Check them out. Yep. We're gonna get this fish back in the water. Appreciate y'all watching. Nice fish. Thank you, buddy. Whoa! <laughs> I hey. ain't going with you, my friend. Look. I ain't going. I with may you. be bad luck because Alex Nagy. <laughs> you remember that video? <laughs> You about went out of that boat that time. Woo! <laughs> High five, buddy. Good deal. Yeah. High five, Dad. Damn. Yeah, that was that was a classic. You, you saw when I got excited when I said, yeah. ooh. Because <laughs> that's that boom. Go and then slack. Well, he didn't slack it. He just slack sat it. on it. Yeah. He just sat on it, man. He he was, you know, one of those ones where they could just spit it just as easy. You know? You'll get that thunk and then they'll just spit it. Most of the time you get that thunk, it'll go slack and then they'll start to pull. And I just go down with them with my rod tip and then sweep back on them. Right. And, uh, you know, just like you've been doing. But uh, he just sat there and I had to just go for it. You know, raise my rod tip and start reeling. You felt the though, didn't you? I knew he was still there, yeah. I knew he didn't spit it yet. Well, Ryan, thanks again for bringing me out. I had a great time. Enjoyed it. If uh, you guys are looking for a guided trip on the Mississippi River, check out Show Me Catfishing Guide Service. Tell them where to get. Uh, check us out at showmecatfishing.com. 
Uh, we're right here in the St. Louis area. That's www.showmecatfishing.com. Check us out. Give us a call. All right, guys. Thanks for watching my videos, and we will see you in the next one.